How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me is Leonard. This is a show about wrestling, and every now and then we will bring you recaps and reviews of some of the more recent events. Now, this will be more of a solo review, but Leonard is here, and he will chime in his thoughts along with me as he sees fit. Right, Leonard? Yes, my excuse this time is that it was the first year anniversary of my wife and I getting married. So we were Saturday, we were at the Ohio Renaissance Festival. Sunday, we went out to dinner for our anniversary. And Monday was Labor Day and we didn't do anything. And that is a wonderful reason to miss out on wrestling. Absolutely. Not that I probably would have watched any of these anyway, right. unless you would have forced me to. Right. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't do that to you this time. Uh, because there was so much wrestling this weekend. But in this video, we're just going to go over the WWE's Clash at the Castle. It took place Saturday, September 3rd, 2022 at Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. And here on the East Coast, it started at, uh, coverage started at about 1 o'clock. So it uh, was an odd time of day to watch a wrestling event and i i did watch it uh during the day and tried to pay attention the matches that i didn't see right away because i did have other stuff going on i went back and watched um so let's just go over the card here We've before had, you say that before you do that i want to say i think it is neat that they're doing more international shows this was the first pay-per-view from britain and what like oh, did they say like 30 years Something like that. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah. they don't do it enough. And if this or the first was, stadium show, I think since SummerSlam '92 out of Wembley, they right. did have like, some what well, insurrection there, but but those were kind of UK exclusive, smaller pay per views that they did during right. the out of year, I think, and such forth. But anyway, since since SummerSlam '92, to have a major out of, like stadium type show in England, and I think it's neat. And I would actually like to see them do more shows like that. And not the Saudi shows, of course, but things from maybe Australia, from France, from yeah. to really capitalize on the fact that they are a global wrestling company with fans and followers all around the world and talent that comes from all around the world. Absolutely, I agree. And if they needed any more convincing, then just look at the crowd at this event. Um, you know, 60 plus thousand strong. And man, they were hot for almost every single minute of this event. And I tell you, it made some of those mediocre matches a lot more entertaining because the crowd was just, they were eating up everything that WWE had. Um, and I didn't watch the pre-show matches, but uh, I know there was uh, the uh, tag match on, on the pre-show, uh, specifically Mad Cat Moss and the Street Profits uh, against Austin Theory and the Alpha Academy. Um, Mad Cat Moss and the Street Profits won that one. That six-man tag was about six minutes and 29 seconds. Um, so I did not, I did not watch that, but the first match on the main card was Bailey, EO Sky and Dakota Kai, uh, I believe they're known as damage control now, um, against Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss and Asuka. And this was basic to me, nothing really special about it. They, the, all the work done here was just fine. Very, you know, workmanlike match, um, entertaining for what it was at the time I went three and a quarter stars. I, I believe that might be being a little bit generous, but uh, that's where I went with it. I thought it was fine uh, for an opener as far as that goes. And uh, Bailey got the win here, uh, pinning Bianca Belair as was needed to kind of further that feud. I will add this. Since Bailey has come back from this long injury break, she has looked very tentative in the ring to me. Um, obviously, I don't know how bad the injury was, but it does seem like she's not – necessarily the same Bailey this time around. So we'll see if she gets more comfortable. Um, the second match for the Intercontinental title was Sheamus versus Gunther. And uh, Gunther comes out reforming Imperium uh, in, in all with all three guys. And this match was awesome. It really, really was. Uh, Gunther or Walter, whatever you want to call him, does really great work in the ring. Sheamus needs a really great opponent in order to give a really good performance, and he has one here. These guys worked really stiff together. You can see that on their bodies. And this match, to me, was really spectacular. I w wanted to watch this event solely for this match uh, because I really hope they continue strapping the rocket to Gunther 
um, because he has slimmed down since his NXT UK days. He looks like a million bucks, and uh, you know he won this match and he kind of re he retained the Intercontinental title. So next we have Liv Morgan against Shayna Baszler for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. And I gave this one, oh, by the way, the Sheamus vs. Gunther match, I gave four stars. Um, for Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler, uh, I gave it two and three quarter stars. The match was okay for what it was. Uh, they're still holding tight on Liv Morgan to, you know, kind of be that underdog champion. And, I mean, she's okay. I just don't know how much longer they can get away with her beating these people that so obviously have better skills than she does. Um it, it just in terms of a look and a move set perspective. Um, so this match was what it was. Uh, nothing special for me. Um, after this, Leonard, they had an appearance by Adrian Street uh, what? at the event. Yeah, he was there with his manager, uh, Linda. Miss Linda. Miss Linda. Yeah, they were both there. And that was unexpected. And it was really great to see him there. Now, he didn't talk or anything, mm -hmm. uh, but just the fact that they were able to get him there and introduce that name to legions of fans that probably have no idea who he is. No, did he get a pop? A, a, a small pop. Like yeah. there were there were a section of the crowd that that knew who he was and gave him some respect. Yeah. Um. So after this, we have Edge and the Mysterios, Dominic and Ray, against mm -hmm. the Judgment Day. Um. Actually, I should rephrase. This is just Edge and Ray Mysterio against the Judgment Day of Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Dominic was at ringside and Rhea Ripley was also at ringside. Um, so this was just a tag match. It wasn't a six man match. And I gave this one three and a half stars. Um, you know, pretty good work here all around. Um, you know, Edge and Ray famously were a tag team before. They were tag team champions. They work really well together. Finn Balor and Damian Priest haven't been together as long. Um, you know, I'm not as high on Damian Priest in the ring. I'm just not. I think he's okay. He's not bad by any stretch, but. Uh, you know, he and Finn Balor haven't been together as long. Um, so, yeah, this was a good match. The big story coming out of this match, Leonard, is the fact that Dominic turned heel on Edge and his dad, which... You know, back at WrestleMania, I believe, because because you had me watch WrestleMania, <laughs> that I believe, I, I, I think it was me that said, and you agreed with me, that Dominic needs to turn on his dad at some point. Yes, and, and, it, and what kind of made that fast forward was, <laughs> I guess, people having fun online with the images of Rhea Ripley kind of dominating Dominic Mysterio in, in on uh, on on shows. And so I don't know if that was the reason, but he has turned, and as of last night, he is a part of Judgment Day, as far as I know. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there with the storyline. I can see Rhea Ripley dominating Dominic in a couple different ways. Yeah. And, you know, this has to be a situation where we miss Eddie Guerrero, right? I mean, can you imagine how gold this program would be if Eddie was still around? Um, yeah, yeah. Would, would, Eddie, Ed, would Eddie be with Edge and Ray in this? I would think that he would – he and Dominic would be the heel team here. They would turn. They would turn. Okay. Because that's his real poppy. That's his real poppy. Okay. <laughs> Um, the uh, second to last match, we have Matt Riddle re uh, getting his first name back again against Seth Rollins. This was a great match. Boy, I support first names, by the way. Yes, absolutely. I do as well. When I do these fancy drafts, and if I draft one of these one-name guys that used to have two names, I give him his name back. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this was a, a really good match, and they did a really good job of building this feud, specifically because they took it off the last pay-per-view this match. And so it had a little bit longer to build, which does wonders um, for WWE storylines. And this was really good. I gave it four and a quarter stars. Uh, I gave it the edge to Gunther and Sheamus just by a little bit um, because these guys worked really well together. And it was just an excellent, entertaining match. And I don't think we've seen the last of that feud uh, by any stretch. So the last match, the main event for the undisputed universal title was Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is his actual name. Drew McIntyre is a great name. <laughs> Drew McIntyre uh, will have a face with Billy Bob Thornton mm -hmm. and Drew McIntyre side by side. We'll make that shirt someday. Um, so this match was really long. It was like a, sh a shade over 30 minutes. 
And, you know, there was a lot of debate on whether or not they were going to actually take the title off Reigns. I knew they weren't going to do it here. I just knew they weren't going to do it in in Wales. No offense. (laughs) I just, I knew if they were going to do it, it wasn't going to be here. Um, And so, yes, Roman Reigns retained. And I gave this match uh, maybe a lower rating than what others would. I gave it three and a half stars. I think that even might be being a little generous. I thought this match was a little bit slow in spots. This is 30 minutes with two guys that aren't used to going that long. And it showed because there was a lot of downtime in this match. And I just don't think they work very well together. They work okay together. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like, you know, blockbuster, crazy main event, classic type match. Um, Roman Reigns needs that special opponent still. And uh, Drew McIntyre is very, very good in the ring, but even he's not, the type of guy who can go in there and just have a classic with anyone. Um, and that's not trying to knock either guy. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so Roman Reigns won. And then awkwardly this, this event is fun as it was to watch. And it was very fun. It ended in the most weird, awkward way possible. Um, you have Tyson Fury, who was at ringside. Um, I should add Austin theory, who also got his first name back, um, came out and was about to cash in the money in the bank uh, contract. But Tyson Fury, who was at ringside, just decided to punch him out and stop him from cashing in. So, um, but then Tyson Fury gets in the ring after the match is over and uh, shakes hands with Roman Reigns and then, you know, helps Drew McIntyre up, you know, I guess just because he's a big name there, I get that. And yeah. then he and Drew McIntyre uh, sing uh, as the as the event ends, which is uh, just odd to me. They what do they American, sing? They sing American Pie. <laughs> so yeah they sang american pie um, i thought it was going to be like the well welsh national anthem or something well uh, that might make a little bit of sense this one to me and the crowd was singing along with them like i said the crowd was hot for this entire thing uh, well but it was just a weird way to end this event uh you know, so. I, I went to a, a house show at the wheeling civic center once and john cena john cena kane and daniel bryan ended the show by singing um uh, Take Me Home, Country Roads by uh, John Denver. Nice. That's a good song. That's a good song. And you know, in, in that area, it might make a little bit more sense. But American Pie in Cardiff, Wales was just kind of head-scratching to me. Yes. Um, yeah, and let me say, I I, um, I think I mentioned before, I'm doing a fantasy pick em. Not watched a split second of WWE television since WrestleMania. I got everything right. Yeah, that's that is impressive. And that includes me going with the underdogs and the Seth Rollins. I picked Seth Rollins over Riddle, and I put, picked Rey Mysterio and Edge over the other guys. Right. Uh, and believe, and this is out of 16 people, 16 votes. So believe it or not, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, that was 50-50. And, yeah, I mean, that's because there was a lot of debate as to what was going to happen there. And, I mean – at the end of the day, although the match quality was certainly above what you would get at the Saudi shows, this is still could be argued as kind of got to be a, a glorified house show because, I mean, there was no title changes here. And, you know, it was just kind of they wanted fans to go home happy to a certain extent. I mean, I guess if you really wanted them to go home happy, you would have had Drew McIntyre win. But yeah. you know, they wanted it to be a crowd pleasing event overall, I think. So um, let me know what you think of my recap. And in the comments and uh, check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Subscribe to our content. Uh, For Leonard, my name is Chad and we will see you next time.